what will it take for you to get the votes necessary to win both the primary and the election? So in the primary, there's about 70,000 registered Democrats on the Upper West Side. There's about, we assume, around 20,000 that'll probably show up to vote on primary day because only registered Democrats can vote. In a six-way race with no runoff, so what that means is whoever just gets one more vote than the other person wins the primary. If we can make sure that we get six or 7,000 votes, then I think I'm fully you know, capable of doing that. So what that requires is you know, targeting a certain percentage of that 70,000 that we think will turn out for us because we have limited resources so we can't target everybody. So we have to find a group of people, target them, call them, send mail to them, reach out to them, try to get them to show up on election day. Okay, so that's our targeted universe. And then at the same time, we're doing this very grassroots thing where we're trying to build a new list of potential people who may not be in that universe, but have you know met me at a subway station, have shown an interest in the campaign, have you know attended a house party, have come to one of our events at a restaurant or something like that, and then organically kind of get our target list down to where we need, and then build this as a you know balance, and then hopefully at the end of the day, people actually show up and vote. <laughs> so there, there, there's you know it requires a lot of hard work, a lot of phone calls, a lot of door knocking. But, you know, it's, it's all grassroots. And, you know, part of my strategy is to run a pretty traditional campaign with just a, a little bit, you know, harder work and, and, you know, more data and more diligence. So I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. You know, I'm just really just trying to get, get in front of the right people and get them to show up. And part of my strategy, and, uh, you know, it was written about this week, is to also increase the size of the pie. Yeah. And what I noticed last year is there are about 17,000 independents on the Upper West Side. And what that means is they're not Democrats or Republicans because there is no real like independent party. They're blanks. So I tried to convince people to switch to become Democrats. Now, the deadline to switch was last October. So there's a whole group of people who are going to be basically left out of this primary, and they're not going to have a say in who their council member is or the Democratic mayoral candidate. But we were successful in getting about 600 people to switch parties, which is, you know, in an election that's six-way race, 50, 100 votes can swing it. So, you know, getting 600 people to become Democrats was a, was a big thing for us. Mm, mm. And going back to the data, we live in a Nate Silver world. What has Nate Silver's work done to inform your own? Well, I mean, I'll, I'll take it even a, a step back. I mean, President Obama really set a new bar for how you're targeting people, how you're collecting data, how you're using information. You know, so every opportunity that we have, if we're engaging with a, a voter on the street, we, we try to get their information, you know, so that we could check in the voter file and identify them as somebody that we've, you know, made contact with. Because just like in advertising or marketing, you, you need to make several, you know, contacts with people to, to get them out uh, to show up on election day. But you have to use the data, especially when you have limited resources, to guide your time and your decisions. So we'll even like we've created you know these various maps of where we think our target universe exists on the upper west side and i'll even pick subway stations that are closer to where the higher density of potential people are you know so even what corners i'm standing on has been dictated by the data 